Brian Gleason of the Phoenix, Arizona office. Now I'm here to talk about the all-new unified multi-access toolpath, along with enhancements done to the multi-access debugger. Let's look at the unified toolpath. It can be found under the toolpath, multi-access gallery, and they gave it a prime spot right across the top of the gallery. Unified is going to be able to do everything that most of the finishing toolpaths in multi-access is going to be able to do. Uh, everything except for maybe SWARF, but Bet we could figure out a way to do that as well. It encompasses everything to be able to do uh, parallel, morph, a long curve, and even flow. Some of the important things that we have our nice little simple part here is being able to pick what kind of pattern we want. Usually by picking the cut pattern is we're picking a specific tool path that's going to have that pattern. So over here we have a parallel. It's going to have a constant step over all the way down across the face. We have a morph. It's going to have a little tighter step overs where those two features morph together, or we have an, a long curve. And so we're going to have a constant step over as it steps across and goes around the side of the helmet. Let's look at our unified. So I created a toolpath just for the unified. I'm going to go ahead and select unified toolpath. The interface looks pretty similar. So on all the other previous toolpaths, I was using a 25,000 step over using the same tool axis control um, surface with tilt, ortho, going to zero, zero, and then collision control was the rest, remainder of the helmet. So we're going to keep those constant settings on this one as well. We're going to go ahead and skip down to the cut pattern. So this page is going to be all pretty new. In the upper portion, we have to pick what kind of pattern do we want. I'm going to go with a automatic on this first one. And this is going to create kind of a equal scallop looking toolpath. We have different options. We can do parallel, um, center parallel, center morph. So it's just going to look at the surface and determine how to create the toolpath for the geometry selected. I'm going to stick with parallel and we'll select the Mandalorian's right side since the left side is already finished. And we'll stick with our constant step over. I'm going to skip down to tool axis control. So we're doing surface with tilt, ortho, zero, zero. Collision control. I'm going to leave it check and shoulder shank. We're going to trim and relink toolpath, turn off machine geometry, turn on avoidance, and I'm going to select everything but the face that we're finishing. From there, I'm going to go ahead, hit OK, see what the toolpath ends up looking like. So we we get is a kind of equal scallop looking toolpath stepping out working its way outside. Oh, actually, this one's working inward. Quick fix. We can just step in here, cut pattern, cut order. I'm going to say from center away. Select OK again. And voila. Starts in the middle. Starts working its way out. We could probably play with the linking a little bit on there, but reduce some of that retrack. Now, Previously, if I wanted to change from a geodesic to a parallel, I'd have to create a whole new toolpath. But if I just wanted to change the cut pattern, I'd be able to just go straight into the parameters. And I'm going to clear this one out, clear out the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to do a curve style toolpath. I'm going to select, let's go chaining. Link, and I'm going to select this curve. So I have a curve selected, and how do I want it to uh, be treated on there? I'm going to say parallel. That's the only thing I'm changing. I'll say OK. And now we have our parallel toolpath, similar to this, but a little more refined, I could go in here, 
put this to standard, and then we'll probably end up looking identical to the previous parallel toolpath. Actually, the unified looks a little better. Maybe I didn't want to use a parallel toolpath. Maybe I wanted to do a morph. Well, instead of creating an all node toolpath, I'm going to clear this one out. I'm going to add a curve. I'm going to rechain the last curve. I'll add a secondary curve. We'll chain it. And I'm just going to move right around the side on the bottom. And how are we going to use this geometry? I'm going to do a morph between the two curves. I'll say OK. It's going to regenerate because of the new feature of auto regenerate. And while it's thinking, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the exact same pattern as we have over here. So it's really helpful that instead of having to create a bunch of different toolpaths, I can change my cut pattern and try to get the tool path shape or cut shape I want and help it see how it's going to play out on the part. So I'd say that one looks pr pretty much the same as the left side. Now let's look at a long curve. I'm just going to go back into the same unified multi-axis. We'll clear these out. I'm going to say curve. I'm going to add a cur uh, curve geometry to the toolpath. And I'm going to tell it how do I want to treat it. Well, let's just cut perpendicular to that. Not changing anything else. I'll say OK. And as that regenerates, we should see it step along and do a pass all the way across the side of the helmet, just like we saw on this side. Pretty awesome. Didn't have to do a whole lot of changes. I can change my cut pattern without creating a whole new toolpath, having to make sure that I have all of my tool axis control and collision check and everything else turned on. But wait, there's more. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to copy this guy down here, copy after. And on my levels, I happen to have a nice little engraving. Go back to my toolpath, open up my parameters, cut pattern. I'll just clear this one out. We'll say we're doing curve. Going to get a wireframe, do a little window selection. Say start over here on the left. Same drive surface. How do we want to treat that geometry? Let's project it. As soon as we change all of our patterns, we're going to get different options over here. For this one, I'm going to give it max project, a half inch. Type user defined, and we're projecting surface normal. So OK, it's going to automatically regenerate. And now we have everything engraved, ready to go. So definitely a lot we can do with the unified toolpath. Um, basically, it can replace all, our SWARF, our parallel, our flow, our long curve, but these are still available in case we open up a legacy toolpath and still need to be able to do it. Or maybe you're more comfortable using the older ones, but the unified is going to be able to do everything that you want to do. All right, so let's look at some enhancements that are done to our Deber multi-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this level off and go back to my toolpath. I'm going to create a new toolpath group. Let's call this one Deber. Well, that's not what I wanted. All right. Previously, with the Deaver toolpath, you could use a spherical end mill, and it would come down and break the edge. But maybe you needed to meet a spec on for one of your customers, and you needed to actually have a fillet or a radii, or even a chamfer. So previously, if I said I wanted a, this is a little over-exaggerated, but 
an edge break of this example, 86 thousandths. Using the deeper toolpath, I would actually end up kind of with two sharp edges, but a little concave edge break. Well, new for our deeper toolpath. Well, uh, we can now go in and add some changes. Let's um, see. I don't know if that quarter inch is going to fit everywhere I want to go, so I'm going to just pick out maybe an eighth inch ball. Cut pattern. Just pick my whole model, and I'm going to do auto detect fun, but I'm just going to be specific. And over on his right ear, I'm just going to say, I want to chamfer across this. So I'm just going to do a chamfered edge on those. So we have a path parameter. We have a constant width. I'll just going to say 50 thou. And number along edges, we can say flat. And now we have the option to say, I want to do five passes, and it's going to create a flat constant width. I'll say OK. Now, previously, we'd only have one toolpath come across there, and we'd have that concave shape. I should have set my parameters a little better. Go back, fix that real quick. So I stroll, we'll just say 3 plus 2. So not quite, a, quite what I want, but let's see here, we'll just say normal to contour. And it should index around and create a toolpath around there. Nice. So now we do have some multi-passes on there and should be able to get a nice little chamfer. We also have options for rounded edges. Um, across the rib, we have a sharp edge along the middle. I want to go ahead and do another deeper pass. I'm just going to copy this guy down, go and change my parameters. I'm going to reselect the edges. And instead of being rounded, I'm going to put a, or flat, I'm going to put a 50 thousandths rounded edge on there. Oh, two axis control, let's go five axis simultaneous. Let's say OK. With that option to regenerate automatically, it's going to be thinking in the background. Why it's thinking, let me go ahead and get my stock set up just using a stock model of the helmet and let's verify our deeper if I run through here pretty quick and easy I can see that I now have a chamfer if I turn on my workpiece we can see that it was a sharp corner we now have a nice chamfer there and a radius edge across that sharp corner on the middle helmet rib. Oh, let's see, let's go ahead and do So we can see we have a pretty good radius. I could have added more step overs to make it a little smoother. It's not an option in there for a scalp pipe yet, but you can always play with that. And looking at the ear, we can see we have a nice, let's hide our tool, a nice looking chamfer around the earpiece. So definitely some cool options, definitely going to save you a lot of time. I've known you may be a customer that actually had to go and create radii on sharp corners to meet spec. 
Now you don't have to do that. You can do it all inside the Deaver toolpath. Super excited about that. Definitely some cool options. So.